the IWF board do exactly as predicted. Lasher outsnatches all competition lifts ever, except for his own, and Great Britain competes for international spots. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of the Weightlifting House news show, the only weightlifting news show in the world. So as mentioned last week on, on the episode, there was serious criticism aimed at the IWF board for not planning on, on vetting the candidates who are running for, for president. The IWF has now since responded by adopting some new rules for the upcoming election, including, as Asla Papandrea was pushing for at the time, eligibility checks. And as it turns out, these changes aren't quite as good as we'd hoped, so I'll come back to that after this. 14 of the board members who are on the IWF members, of those 14, seven are running to become the president. There are then four additional external candidates, uh, Slepap Andrea, Zhu Jinkwang from China, Stian Grimseth of Norway, and Ali Muradi from Iran. Now to describe just how out of place and maybe poor these, these choices of, of candidates for president who are currently on the board are, I turn to Brian Oliver's fantastic quote from one of his brilliant articles that he's been he's been putting up on insidethegames.biz. The links to those are down below. And he says as follows. The board's candidates include two representatives from countries that are banned from Tokyo 2020 because of multiple doping violations, another whose nation is likely to join them, a fourth who might, the current interim president who does not have the support of his own national federation, that's Great Britain, and an 85-year-old. And I just think the way that he says that at the end, and an 85-year-old, referring to Sam Coffer from Australia, is uh, is hilarious. I think one of the current board members who probably has a lot of support from the current board members for becoming the president is Mohammed Youssef Almana of Qatar, and he is currently the Qatar weightlifting president, who I'm pretty sure I have I have met briefly whilst in Qatar. He drives an amazing car, as you might expect, uh, but I don't know really almost anything about the guy, so I, I've got no opinions on this. But I do know that neither he nor Koffer nor Irani, the current interim president, have responded to Brian Oliver's messages and calls requesting for comments on this whole on this whole topic. A favourite question of mine from Brian being uh, a request for an explanation as to how Irani is actually eligible to run again to become president because neither does he have the support of British weightlifting, which which you need. You need the support of your home federation. He does not have that. Nor has he been on the board for 12 years, which is a loophole that, that the, the brief interim president uh, from Thailand, Interat, is somehow managing to jump through. But because Irani has neither of those things, neither the support nor the time on the board, I don't see how he's able to run. So hopefully he'll get back to Brian at some point explaining that to us. So at the start, I mentioned that the changes that the IWF board were going to make for this upcoming election turned out to be not so good. Here's a quote from Brian about the the other candidates who feel like this is unfair. They say the deadlines imposed for submitting eligibility documents cannot be met, especially by those from less developed countries and the demands are poorly thought through and unfair. According then to Ursula, the vetting only makes things more complicated. So it seems like the requirements that they are asking for are essentially impossible to fulfill properly at this time. And they certainly make it disproportionately more difficult for, for candidates from less developed countries to, to officially apply. Zhu Jinkwang, the, the candidate from China, stated... I'm sorry to be direct, and, and this is in reference, or this is this is targeted at the current IWF board. He says, I'm sorry to be direct, but it is too short a time to leave only a few days to all candidates to prepare all of these documentations during the current COVID-19 pandemic in particular. Now, last week I mentioned that the board would have some level of an advantage because they know who the candidates are, they know the hurdles over which they have to jump to essentially be eligible to be a candidate for president. And the advantage is now clearly here. I mean, those applying for president outside of the board have had less than a week. So in between last week's episode that I recorded and right now when you're watching this, in fact, a few days ago, the candidates received information about vetting 
and then had to have it submitted. Some of the documents that were required to submit don't even exist. So it's been essentially impossible for some of these candidates, Ursula, uh, Zhu Zhengquang, Ali Muradi, amongst others, to actually officially apply for the position. So this is just totally ridiculous. I'm kind of waiting to see and read more updates on Inside the Games. That's the best place to go if you want to stay up to all of this stuff outside of just these weekly updates where I try and just summarize some of these things for you. So like I said, links are down below, but hopefully something is going to happen. Something important is going to happen. And the IDF board is going to have to concede that they have made an utter utter mess of this whole situation. Okay, so let's move on to, to the lifts. Before I do that, just a reminder, we still have some plates available, uh, 25s, 20s, 15s, 10s, over at weightlifthouse.com in the USA and the UK, so you can check those out there. Um, and also, actually, before, before we move on to anything, probably the most important thing to say, last week on the people's lifts, I mentioned a guy called Tyler. Uh, his Instagram handle is spray.k, spray period k, and I mentioned him because of this awesome outdoor split clean plus squat jerk lift that he did. Well, um, I spoke to him afterwards. He got in touch with me. It turns out his wife, who is 16 weeks pregnant, has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And so there is a GoFundMe that's been set up, I think, by her cousin, perhaps, which is going to help pay for all of the chemo. It's going to help for... Uh, the time off that he's going to have to take to look after the family. And so I'm going to put a link to that GoFundMe down below. It would be hugely appreciated um, by uh, Tyler if you could donate to this cause. I just think it's, you know, if we can get behind um, Tyler on this, I think that would be absolutely amazing. Just get the, the full force of those who listen to, to the news show to contribute to try and help him and his wife out. So the link to that is down below. Over now to Australia, where we're going to kick things off. We have 81 kilo Aileen Thikumatana, who just hit a new PR in the snatch, 121 kilos. Now, she hit 120 kilos on her 21st birthday. I think it was early December, so this is this is another kilo in just a couple of months. She's also recently now moved. She's been, I think, moving all around Australia to different cities. She's now in Melbourne, uh, and there's an interview with her talking about her competition, history, training, and these moves over at the weightlifting platform. So you can check that out on there. But anyway, this 121, very exciting. It's nice to see her catch lifts right in the bottom of the hole rather than powering them all the time. And uh, it just kind of shows that whatever technique work she's doing at the moment, it's working because the balance and the catch in the receiving position of this is fantastic. Over to Georgia, Lasha Talakadze snatched 217 kilos again. So I know this wasn't in competition, but let's just think of these competition lifts. We've got 214 Salimi. 215 we've seen from Ashot Danielian and from Anatoly Kripati. 216 we've seen from Behadad Salimi again. And then, of course, as was the heaviest snatch for several decades in competition, Krastev also hit 216 kilos. And then in competition from Lasha, we've seen 217. 217, 218, 220, 220, and more in unofficial competitions. And I mean, that 215 from Ashot Daniel in that I included, that's not an official competition. So if we include that, we've got to include Lasher's 222 as well. But anyway, this 217 from Lasher in, in training looked fantastic. It didn't look like a big deal. I mean, there's a weightlifter in the back uh, who's not really even looking. George Asenidze is just sort of watching and walks off. Lasher kind of expectantly is looking over to get some level of feedback, I suppose. But it's not like it's a competition. It didn't look like a big lift. Everyone wasn't staring at him. It looked very much like a second attempt. So very exciting to see from the big guy. We have a few lifts from China that we'll get through quickly. The first, the GOAT, the 36-year-old sensation, Lu Xiaojun, 245 snatch pull, 270 clean pull. Then we have Tian Tao, who... Uh, has sort of risen to the to the squat challenge um, that has been set up by Toshiki Yamamoto and Clarence Kennedy. He says that within a month, he will easily squat 330 kilos to beat them both. So that's exciting. I also noticed his face looked particularly round in that video, which is interesting. And then finally from China is Yuan Cheng Fei, the 73 kilo 2017 Asian champion, 2000 2017 Asian champion, 2000 and 
18 and 16 Asian silver medalist, I think. 202 kilo power jerk, so four kilos over the world record. Uh, and also the fact that he's a squat jerker and then he just powered this shows how much strength he really does have in the dip and drive. The fact that he squat jerks, I suppose, more of a fatigue thing after a heavier clean. He doesn't have legs quite as strong as Shi Ziyong. Now, talking about not having as strong legs as Shi Ziyong, we go to probably the weakest strong 73 in the world with an incredible story here from Japan, Miyamoto Masanori, who hit an incredible... 191 kilo front squat PR. Now this is remarkable because we have seen him clean and jerk 190 kilos. We've also seen him snatch 155 kilos, but 190 kilo clean and jerk. He didn't even catch a nice bounce, sort of caught it forward, somehow managed to stand up and then jerk it. And now he posts this 199 PR front squat. And it looks like a PR as well. It doesn't look like there's a huge strength reserve. So it goes to show that you've got to be, I mean, I was about to say it goes to show you don't have to be that strong to be amazing. You obviously do because a 190 front squat or 191 front squat 73 is great. But we all know a few people who are sort of in that realm. It's just amazing that he's able to actually end up cleaning jerk 190 and snatching 155. I suppose front squatting 255 like Shi Ziyong and, and CJ Cummings does probably doesn't really hurt though. Over in South Korea, Lee Sang, 67 kilo Lee Sang, just snatched 150 kilos. That is five kilos under the world record of 155 from China's Huang Min Hao, who has also snatched as much as 160 kilos in training. But 150 by Lee Sang is a, a fantastic lift for him. And then sticking with South Korea and sticking with the lift that we've had uh, for a few weeks on the trot, actually, it's 102 kilo Jinyan Song, probably soon to be 109 kilo Jinyan Song because he's he, he's in a position where he might actually qualify for the Olympics in the 109s. He just hit a 180 kilo block double in the snatch. He did 185 last week for a single, 190 for a single this week, which is the most we have ever seen from him in any variation of the snatch. He then hit 220 kilos in the clean and jerk, 225 in the clean, just missed the jerk, and then a 220 block clean and jerk also. So he's in phenomenal shape. He could make it into the top eight in the world, or at the very least get the um, the the Asian spot outside of the top eight. So if you remove Yang Zhe from China, because China won't send him, you remove Timur Naniev at the very least, because there's there's two Russians there. There's Rodion Bochkov and there's Timur Naniev. I don't know if either will go, but potentially, well, certainly one of them won't, but potentially both won't. Uh, and then you start removing a few others and you kind of realize, okay, actually, Jin Yin Song might make it into that kind of top eight slash highest outside of the top eight in Asia category. Over in Uzbekistan, we have Ruslan Nuruddin of the 109, 215 kilos this week, five kilos up from last for a one plus one plus one. That's a clean front squat jerk, so things are looking good for him. I've actually spent some time today looking at flights for Uzbekistan for the Asian Championships, and uh, it was only until I'd been searching for a little while that I realised that all British citizens were unable to fly to Uzbekistan. So I wasted a little bit of time on that. Hopefully things will change. Uh, they're going to reevaluate on the 1st of March. And then it might be possible that I can go and film the Asian Championships. But right now, me flying almost anywhere for these upcoming Continental Championships seems almost impossible. So we're going to see what we can do at Weightlifting House for them in terms of coverage and, and filming. But... Uh, it's not going to be easy. It's really not going to be easy this time. Over to Belgium, we have Nina Sturks, a 55, I think sometimes 49, but I think 55 at the moment, kilo weightlifter. She just hit 82 kilos for a block double, which was an amazing set of two, an 85 single, and then, and she she's a really great weightlifter to watch actually because she's got the narrow grip, which I just always think is kind of fun because people who are shorter tend to be you know, built a little bit differently, I suppose. 85 kilos and then 87 kilos for the most impressive save. It's save of the week, that's for sure. Uh, rocks back on the heels, hips tuck under, finds a balance, comes back forward and then manages to stand it up. So an amazing 87 from Nina. She then hit 103 kilos in the clean and push jerk. So, and I, I think that's two kilos under the most that she's hit in the qualifying period in the clean and push jerk, which is great. The 87 in the block snatch is a kilo over anything that she's hit. So things are going well for her. And alongside all of this training, she's doing a full-time degree in physics, which is probably not the 
easiest degree to do. So, uh, yeah, great work from Nina Sturks. Next to Spain, and again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep talking about Lydia's squats until they stall or stop because they just become more interesting. They started at 20, they went to 40, 50. Now this week it's 160 for three. Hopefully next week we get a 70 double or something like that. I'll report on that, but it's worth reporting on anything from someone who is um, so decorated in the sport. And, and Lydia certainly is one of those athletes. Over the last 15 years, really, she has won a countless, I suppose not countless, because we can count them, but she's won a lot of medals internationally. Next to France, we have Redon Minouchi, and I'm just going to keep mentioning Redon Minouchi until we force him out of retirement, because at this point, his lifts are getting too exciting for a out-of-competition, out-of-the-sport 89-96-kilo weightlifter. He just hit 160 kilos in the snatch, which looked pretty easy. I mean, obviously, he hit that 185 off blocks in the video I posted recently on YouTube. Then he also just hit 200 kilos in the jerk. That's one kilo under his front squat PR. Is that right? He just hit 201, I think. I reported that a few weeks ago. So one kilo under his jerk PR, under his front squat PR, sorry, and he jerks it. So just really exciting lifting from right on right now. Now we had over here the uh, an online competition for Commonwealth Games and Europeans as a kind of qualifier for both of those competitions. Now, I am not going to go through every single performance. I'm just going to go through a few uh, because some of them need to be mentioned, basically. The first is from 64 kilo Sarah Davies, who had a, a particularly easy looking 124 kilos in the clean and jerk. Jerk certainly looked better than it has done in, in recent history, I suppose. And I know she's been working on that. So that was really nice to see from her. Emily Campbell, super heavy, absolutely smashed this competition. 121 in the snatch. That's uh, two kilos up on the most she's ever done in competition in the snatch, I believe. 151 clean and jerk, that's a 272 total, which again, that's a kilo over the most she's totaled in the what's now a 24-month qualifying period for this Olympics. So that's very exciting. I mean, if she does make it to the Olympics, which she should do, she really should do, she gets this competition in at the Europeans, hopefully, she should be fine. Um, but yeah, she could really do some damage at these Olympics. Next, we have the 109 kilo slash 102 sometimes. I don't actually know which he competed in at this competition. Cyril Fajat, 150, 190. So about 10 kilos off the most we've seen from him. We saw him do 160 in 2019 at the British Championship slash International Cup of some sort. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, he missed 155. He missed 202 as well. Got under the clean, just wasn't able to stand it up. But hopefully that will be there soon. Then we have 49 kilo Norin. I'm not I'm not sure she competed at 49. May have been 55, I suppose, but may have been 49. She went six for six, had a fantastic day. 70 in the snatch, a new PR in the clean and jerk at 92 kilo. So that's a 162 kilo total. Then we have Sally Bennett, 71 kilo weightlifter, who finally broke through the, the 200 kilo barrier and, and went through it quite easy, actually. 93 in the snatch, 112 in the clean and jerk. 205 kilos in the total, five kilos up through that barrier, which is nice. And also just nine, I say just, an amazing nine kilos up on any total that she's hit during this qualifying period before that. So she's done fantastically well here. Now, I just realized I haven't actually mentioned all of the athletes, or I haven't, I haven't written them down in my notes for some reason. So I'm going to go through them on my phone quickly. Chris Murray, 81 kilo hit what would have been a, a national record, basically, in the clean and jerk, 176 kilos, which is fantastic. Not sure what he ended up snatching. Uh, I remember he opened at 35, which he made. I think that may then have been the most that he had at that competition. But 135, 176, if, it, if that is what he hit, that's a 311 total. So pretty good start for him. Then we have Freya Morrow, Freya 55 kg, who lifted fantastically. She's actually been one of the lifters who I've thought for a little while is probably going to be one of the fastest improving and probably the future of, of lifters in, in the UK. Uh, she ended up going, what well, looks like five or six, 81, 84, 87. And that 80, she's also got such a narrow grip. It's incredible. Let's see this 87. Yeah, great mobility. Very, very strong underneath. Ex-gymnast, so very strong overhead as well. Uh, then in the clean and jerk, 105. That's a big opening for her. 109 make. And she always has an amazing back knee. Uh, she's able to get into these jerks amazingly well. Let's just see this 109 quickly. Cleans it strongly. Yeah. The, just, gymnasts just tend to be able to lock out overhead and just hold it. 
they're just so well at stacking themselves in the in the in the correct way. One eleven now. This I'm pretty sure is a PR attempt. Yep, yeah, and just doesn't just doesn't get up with it. All right, my camera just died, uh, but I'm back. Uh, so that was the that was the competition in the UK. Let's go over to the USA quickly. We have a few really big lifts. CJ Cummings, 73 kilo, uh, world medalist, youth world record holder, youth world champion, multiple time national champion, Pan Am gold medalist, uh, 250 kilo front squat heater set. And it's just, I mean, he has absolute pistons for legs. That's five kilos below his best, I believe, 255, unless he's done more and he's never posted it. But that's five kilos below what we know he's capable of which is an amazing lift. Next we have Jordan Cantrell, 89 kilo weightlifter, 205 kilos in the jerk. Pretty sure we've seen as much as 207 or 208 from him in the past, but 205 is huge. He's always been, again, uh, a bit of a freak overhead. 190 snatch balance he did like two and a half years ago before he was even a world uh, world competitor. So he's very, very strong. Uh, and then finally from the USA, it is coach Mary, Mary Tyson Lappin, super heavyweight with a 202 kilo front squat double. She's jerking just a few kilos shy of the world record. She's front squatting way over the world record for reps now. Um, she can't clean it. She'd probably stand it up if she did though. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, she's an exciting lifter to watch right now. Next, we'll head over to Colombia and not, not sure if Colombia is gonna compete at the Olympics, actually. Obviously they had uh, a few recent positive tests uh, they're claiming that the um, drug responsible for this pop was something that was found in, in meat, which is something that does happen in, in Colombia. So um, they've taken that to court. So it might be that they're allowed in. It might be that they're not. We don't yet know. But let's keep reporting on Colombia until we, we know for certain. Santiago Rodalegas, 81 kilo weightlifter, just hit 140 kilos for... It was a pull and then a low hang pause snatch. So he pulled it up lowered it to an inch off the floor, almost like a floating snatch, I suppose. Uh, but then he paused for a few seconds, held it isometrically, pulled it, went under, incredible lockout. And then also from him as well, a 140 kilo block snatch double. And then to a 96 kilo weightlifter we haven't spoken about in a while because he just never posts and he really should. It's Jonathan Rivas, one of the best snatches in the Pan American regions, one of the best snatches in the 96 kilo class in the world, 180 kilos he's done before. This today, a 190 kilo clean plus front squat plus jerk plus behind the neck jerk, which is quite the complex, looked very easy. We're looking at probably around 88% of his best. I think we've maybe seen him do 213, maybe 214, something like that. So 190 right around there. So that's pretty good for, for such a complex. And then finally, we're going to go to Brazil, but we're not going to go to Fernando. We're not going to mention his... 320 back squats, uh, which I've now mentioned. We're going to go to Monique Araujo, or Araujo, uh, 76 kilo weightlifter. She just snatched 100 kilos for a, a snatch plus hang snatch, uh, and then a 110 kilo block snatch, which equals, I believe, her Brazilian record of 110 kilos. So amazing lifting from her. Now, before we get onto the people's lifts, I thought if you need any kind of uh, ad to see how nice the new weightlifting house place look, uh, well, Central London Weightlifting or Connor Lift stuff on Instagram uh, did a nice little video showing the, the bar being loaded. So I'm gonna let that play while I talk. Uh, and as I mentioned before, these plates are available in lower quantities right now because we've, we've almost sold out. But we do have some available in the USA and in the UK. And then in two weeks probably we'll have uh, a load more sets available in in both places again so if you're in the need of plates and if you're in the need of bars then uh, check now but if not it won't be much longer before we are fully kitted out again okay so let's wrap things up with the people's lifts if you want to be featured on the people's lifts just use the hashtag the people's lifts and you will make it or, or make up a funny hashtag that starts with the people's lifts and I'll find that as I have one of those now which I'll go through um, but to kick things off we're going to go to Ryan Sester R Sester S-E-S-T-E-R on Instagram I don't know I've, you know what I've never seen this guy before and now I don't know how he ever like how I've never been sent his videos or if I have how I hadn't seen them 190 kilos in the clean jerk 190 as a I mean, 
Let's have a look, but he doesn't look like he's necessarily more than 102. Okay, so here we are. Um, you know what, it doesn't say how much he weighs. I'd be surprised if he was a 109, to be honest. He looks, oh, he's clean 200 kilos. Oh my word. You really need to um, go follow this guy, everyone. That is insane. In fact, let's follow him right now. There we go. Uh, go follow uh, Ryan Sester. 190 clean and jerk, 200 clean, 150 snatch the other day, 150 kilo power clean plus push press. Just so strong explosive. It, it's ridiculous. He's, he's the future right there. And then next we have Jacob Toot WL. Jacob's, uh, yeah, Jacob T O U T W L, who used the hashtag the people's lifts for people who skip their accessory work and max out instead. I sympathize with you, Jacob. He's a 15 year old and he just broke the, the various youth state records in Australia. 95, 120. And he, again, he's not like, he's not like a 100 kilo 15 year old. He's just like a 15 year old. Uh, and he snatched 95 and clean jerked 120. That's a 17 kilo competition PR for him. So just amazing work. Yeah, uh, the hashtag, the people's list for people who skip their accessory work and max out instead. I like that one. Next, we're going to go to Safa underscore joyfully. Uh, I don't know his name. I think his name is JP or that's his nickname. Uh, 225 kilos in the back squat. And then he did 180 for six sets of five. Who does six sets of five? People do three sets of five or five sets of five. No one does six sets of five. Maybe five sets of six. Uh, he's only got 26 followers, so go and follow him as he's very, very strong. And 180 for 6 by 5 and 225 for 1 is ridiculous. I think he only snatches 111 though, and I say only. I know that's more than a lot of people, but it's 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 less than most people who squat 225, I'll put it like that. Uh, so maybe if enough people go and follow him, he's going to put some more work into a snatch and, and up that to the 120 mark, because uh, he needs to hit that soon. Next, we're going to go to another 15-year-old who's also freakishly strong, Caleb underscore GGV. He's a 58-kilo weightlifter, and he just cleaned 117. So he must be lighter than Jacob Toot, but he didn't snatch 95 like Jacob did, but he did clean 117, which is remarkable. Uh, so yeah, go follow another young freak, Caleb underscore GGV. Then we have... From Ronan Strength UK, a uh, great bunch of guys who run a, a really impressive programming and I guess SNC weightlifting company in the UK. Uh, they posted a video of one of their athletes, Strength Coach Jam, hitting 125 159 at this English competition that was on a few days ago that I just mentioned. Uh, the 125 was superb, the 159 as well. I mean, the guy is totally yoked and uh, I hadn't seen him before, so go follow that guy as well. That's Strength Coach Jam, and that was posted by Ronin Strength UK. And then finally, let's end things with the Manimal underscore Omar, another weightlifter competing in the English competition. 142, 181, all of them were PRs, all of them were under 23 British records, and the Manimal Omar, and that's the Manimal like man slash animal, uh, is also totally yoked. So go follow him too. So uh, just to go through them again, we have Arcester, Jacob Toot WL, Suffer underscore Joyfully, Caleb underscore GGV, Ronan underscore Strength underscore UK, and the Manimal underscore Omar. These are amazing weightlifters. You need to go follow these guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Head over to weightliftinghouse.com. Also head over to Virus International. Use discount code weightliftinghouse for 10% off. I appreciate you all tuning in. I'll catch you all on another episode of the Weightlifting House podcast. Mm-hmm.